So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the work uh, that's mostly being done by Tom and I right now, but uh, uh, the reasons why we are making changes to the GNU Radio API for the 3.7 release and um, sort of where we are with that. Uh, also, I thought I was going to be the last person between you and uh, lunchtime, uh, but since there's an hour for this, uh, and this is probably only going to go about a half hour for my presentation, Matt Edis will be filling in the rest of the time with some uh, new announcements and discussion uh, from uh, some hardware products uh, uh, from Edis. And then uh, he can be in between you and lunch. So in GNU Radio right now, we're at the 3.6 release. We're making some incremental changes, adding new functionality into uh, 3.6.1. We just released 3.6.2. And it may appear that um, there's not a great deal of work getting into these new incremental releases. And that's because the vast majority of new development right now is happening uh, on the next branch uh, in preparation for the release of 3.7. And sort of what we're addressing with this work, okay. so what we're addressing with this work is sort of a refactoring and a cleanup of the GNU radio code base um, that has become a little unwieldy after 11 years of organic growth. Uh, we were looking in the GNU radio core um, uh, top level component uh, in preparation for this. We actually counted over 300 GNU radio blocks in just that one component. And so in order to uh, make that a little bit less uh, unwieldy and to uh, make the source code easier to browse as well as, of course, breaking this up into more modular pieces. We came up with a plan to uh, take Libunu Radio Core and break it up into several new top-level components. The other thing that we noted was um, the way that we separate uh, different namespaces in GNU Radio, where we have the GR underscore block name underscore the data type um, suffix. That isn't scaling well because it's still a global namespace. And everything we do, you know, all the header files go in one directory, you know, and they all have to uh, be um, unambiguous in there. Uh, we felt that there was an opportunity if we were going to do this reorganization to also make some changes to the source code base. Uh, so that, you know, if we're going to break things, we'll do it all at once and come out with that. So we're, we're basically reorganizing all of GNU Radio, um, like we had the actual time to do that. There's going to be three fundamental changes uh, to what you'll see when the 3.7 tarball comes out or the, when we merge the next branch back into master for the 3.7 release. Uh, the biggest one is that libgnu Radio Core will be gone. And all of the blocks uh, that were inside the LibGNU Radio Core, as well as the GNU Radio runtime itself, um, will be broken up and put into individual top-level um, directories. And we'll, we have some criteria for what goes where. Um, part of it is driven by um, the desire to isolate external dependencies. So that if you're using GNU Radio for something, um, and the blocks that you're using don't depend on an external library, um, you aren't necessarily forced into the situation where you still have to install and use you know, a bunch of things that are related to other blocks that happen to be tied together in GNU Radio Core. So hopefully by breaking this up, we do it in a way that means uh, you know, both at uh, compile time for your application and at runtime, the amount of other unrelated code becomes much less. While we're doing this, um, again, because a lot of the code over the last 11 years has accreted organically by different developers with different coding styles, um, we wanted to take the opportunity to clean all that up. And that includes uh, getting all the header file documentation consistent between the blocks, uh, as that's the source of the documentation that goes into all the automated documentation generators like Oxygen. And so, um, sort of while we're under the hood, let's just go ahead and clean all this up. The second major change 
is that instead of having just um, uni radio classes that uh, you instantiate uh, and, or inherit from uh, that have you know a mixture of public and private um, symbols or, or data inside them, we're going to a pure virtual interface class. So for those users who are uh, writing GNU Radio apps entirely in C++, not Python, this will require some change in how you um, instantiate GNU Radio blocks and create the shared pointers to them that you're going to later then manipulate you know, and connect into a flow graph and whatnot. Just by a show of hands, how many people here are writing uh, GNU Radio applications uh, without Python? They're writing code that is ultimately becomes a binary that you run and not a Python script that you run. I think I saw a couple of people. Okay, it's, it's still not as popular an option because it's so easy uh, to use Python as that outer wrapper to instantiate and um, uh, create uh, flow graphs. But particularly in embedded systems where you may not want to have the Python interpreter lying around to, to execute these things, uh, or where you want to have a system that is, um, uh, you know, not reliant on having you know multiple languages installed. Uh, we added the ability to create pure GNU Radio C++ applications several years ago, and, and some people have been using that. Like the the GNSS uh, presentation we saw, that whole system is in pure C++. There's no Python involved. Whereas most of the other presentations you've seen um, have been done using Python as the outer wrapper. The good news is, is when we make this change, the impact on Python users is, is, there's an impact, but it's very minimal. And in particular, the impact on GRC users is almost none. Because as you go up that level of abstraction, the changes that we're making in the API are fairly low level and get hidden by, uh, for example, the SWIG mechanism that makes the, the GNU radio classes available from within Python. The last change is that, while, again, while we're doing this, we're touching 300 blocks you know, to do this. We'll look for any opportunity we can to use the libvolk um, simd acceleration functions inside the work functions of uh, the different blocks. Now, we've probably hit the majority of the ones that are going to make the really big difference, the filtering, convolutional kernels, the um, blocks that are in GR Digital. Um, so the, I think the bulk of the improvement from libvolk is already there. But we're going to take this opportunity to go try this in different blocks and benchmark them and measure you know, whether or not it makes a difference. Uh, and that way, by the time we come out with 3.7, uh, we'll have um, you know, done a, a good, clean sweep through the whole code base to see where um, performance improvements can be easily had with, with LibVolk. Is there any questions on this? Okay. You all want to hear Matt talk, don't you? Our strategy on this uh, probably creates more work for us uh, than uh, other ways of doing it, uh, but we're doing it so that we don't impact users as much. What we're trying to do is anything new that we add to GNU Radio, we're adding a new top-level block um, to the existing master branch as part of 3.6, but we're not getting rid of the old one. So, for example, the, the blocks that um, we're part of the GNU Radio Core filter directory are now duplicated in GR filter. But you can continue to use the old ones as long as 3.6 is releasing. When we release 3.7, then we'll rip all those out of GNU Radio Core. So it gives you a chance then to um, start migrating your code to use the new blocks, uh, but not forcing you to do it before you're ready. Uh, or at least until 3.7 comes out, and you want to adopt that. The, um, the only place where we can't really provide that kind of transition for you is in the remainder of the top-level components that, um, you know, we're not changing them, we're not adding new ones. Uh, we're just going to have to change them to the new organization in place on the next branch. And so in, in master, they'll look one way, and then when we release 3.7, they'll look the new way. And you won't really have the opportunity, like you will with the GR filter and GR digital, uh, to um, experiment with migrating to the new design. Uh, of course, the GR digital and GR filter are probably the most complicated ones anyway. So, 
If you, get, if you figure out how to use those in the 3.6 series, the ones that will change in 3.7 uh, won't be nearly as complicated to do. So GNU Radio Core um, has had the GNU Radio runtime, the top block, and, and all of the um, runtime uh, code, the scheduler, the, the, the common math types, and, and all of that, as well as a series of you know, source and sync blocks, all the uh, transform blocks for filtering for digital. Uh, you know, it's grown into this huge list. And, and Tom and I went through uh, with some feedback as well um, and decided to divide these up into things that really represent different ways that GNU Radio is used, hopefully in an orthogonal enough way to where um, you know, there will be a lot of programs that will only use a few of these instead of having to use all of them, which sort of defeats the purpose. And the first one, of course, is the runtime. So now if you want to develop an application that uses GNU Radio, and, and you write like your own blocks and you're not using much of the existing library of blocks, um, you'd be able to link to a very lean GNU Radio runtime and produce a very small application uh, without having to pull in the boat anchor and in particular all the dependencies that that boat anchor depends on. Uh, so that's, that's the first change. The signal or the non-signal processing blocks that are common to most flow graphs Things like the you know, streams to vectors and the, uh, the very simple type conversion blocks and some of the simple math, you know, the add and subtract and things like that. Those are all going into a uh, blocks component that will be, you know, probably every flow graph will use things from GR blocks. Um, the idea is to not have to mix those in with a bunch of other components. It's kind of like the default for anything. It isn't really signal processing, but you tend to use it a lot to hook together different blocks in place. The next two components, um, GR analog and GR digital, are an attempt to separate out the functionality um, that tends to be somewhat orthogonal. Um, you know, if you've got an AM or FM receiver, you're using analog waveform blocks. You're not worrying about sending bits over the air. Um, you know, if you're doing you know, mobile radio with squelch functions or you, you know, have to measure, you know, channel power to, um, you know, decide things. These tend to be analog operations that group together, and we're going to put all the blocks that are related to that into this new GR analog component. GR digital, which is something that we've already been working on for some time, um, collects the uh, different blocks that are required for sending bits over the air. So all the PSK modulation, the OFDM, the, um, you know, the constellation uh, type stuff, all of the, uh, the bit manipulation and the uh, uh, you know, packed and unpacked and all of that go into the digital module. And this exists today. So this is something you can look at in 3.6. All of the functionality, or most of it, I think, is still in LibGNU Radio Core. Um, some might have been removed. A lot of, uh, yeah, for 3.6, yeah. So some of that got removed. But you can look at that because that's an example now of um, you know, some of the categorization that's happening here. The <clears throat> one of the dependencies in GNU Radio has always been the FFTW external library. Now that's typically used in almost any digital uh, application. But it requires, even if you're not using FFTs, to have installed the FFT uh, w library, and if you're doing development, you have the FFTW development headers installed. By separating out these blocks um, that wrap the FFT library into their own component, then you only need to load that up if you're going to be using FFT functionality. Now, like some of the digital stuff depends on that, so that gets pulled in automatically. But again, it's, an, it's, it's being done in a way that hopefully uh, it's not a binary, all of GNU Radio or not type of decision anymore. You can, you can include just the bits and pieces that you need from the library. Likewise with GR filter, um, all of our FIR and IR code, uh, this will be where the, the filter design tool would end up if we integrate that. Um, the, uh, well, no, the equalizers are in digital, right? I always get that. Adaptive filters are in GR filter. The equalizers are in GR digital that use the adaptive filters. Okay. Um, the, 
The GR vocoder and GR wavelet top level components already exist now as well. This was sort of the genesis of this whole thing, is we wanted to move, in particular with GR wavelet, there are a small number of blocks that are dependent on the GNU Scientific Library, libgsl, which is kind of a pain to install because then it depends on you know a, a vector library, that uh, or a linear algebra library that uh, you know there's several options to to install that, and very few applications are using wavelet transforms. So when we decided to move this out into GR wavelet, it was like the idea. Well, where else could we apply this idea of isolating external dependencies? Um, so, so GR Wavelet has been in there for, for some time now. The vocoder, um, there were some top-level components, like we had a, a GSM uh, full-rate vocoder, uh, but then we had some G7XX uh, vocoders in LibGNU Radio Core as well. So that was a, a top-level component that was created to collect all that together. Uh, and then we added like support for Codec 2, um, the, the new Opus codec um, that just got ratified by ETF, we're going to look at that and see what it might take to wrap that. Um, the, but the vocoder library exists and has been um, part of the strategy uh, since 3.6. Uh, was there a question? I thought I saw a hand up. Okay. Uh, GRFEC right now will be a very small thing. What we have in GNU Radio Core for forward error correction is a single implementation of a rate one half convolutional coder and a Viterbi decoder, which was really an implementation by Phil Karn that we wrapped uh, with GNU Radio Blocks several years ago. Um, there's that, and then we have an implementation of Reed Solomon block coding that uh, uh, was used for the uh, ATSC uh, demodulator. And they just kind of got stuck in there, but they're, they're hard to use, and they're, uh, you know, they're really narrow, specific uh, implementations for one type of coding. And what we're hoping to do by creating the GRFEC top-level component is to begin to look at more general purpose, uh, both convolution and other, convolutional and other type of FEC um, codes uh, to help grow using GNU Radio with forward error correction much more easily than it's done now. And uh, um, that's, that's typically, you know, forward error correction and sort of above the Phi Mac layer stuff is a traditional weakness of GNU Radio. So we're hoping that we can sort of spur some, some development work. Is there a question? Okay. It's like an auction. If you move slightly, I'll ask you if you have a question. Um, so these are the top level components. We're taking one thing and we're breaking it up into eight, which seems like the wrong direction to go. But we're hoping that there are eight relatively orthogonal small pieces rather than one giant kitchen sink. Um, does that make sense? Uh, was this the obvious thing to do years ago and we just didn't admit it? or um, it just kind of grew out of hand. It's one of those things like, you know, you don't want to deal with it. You just keep throwing new stuff in LibGeneral, and eventually, you know, um, when, when the directory listing takes up several pages, you start to realize maybe that wasn't the right way to go. We began this process in the 3.5 release, um, but we still haven't extended it to everything. Most of the stuff that's in LibGNU Radio Core, or that's outside of LibGNU Radio Core, rather, has been implemented with this top-level flat hierarchy. The idea is that um, the different directories inside of a GNU Radio component do one kind of thing. So in the lib directory, we have the C++ implementation. In the include directory, we have the public header files, which will become the public you know, virtual interface class files. Um, the, the SWIG machinery for wrapping GNU Radio in Python is isolated in its own component or its own subdirectory. Um, we had a, a, a mixture or a variety of things where there's like source lib and source Python, and then there was SWIG. And in another component, it was inverted, you know, where, you know, it was unpredictable where things were. So we have been implementing new code using this standard directory tree. Uh, and waiting for the opportunity when we're going to move all this LibGNU Radio core stuff out to when we re-implement, uh, you know, these new top-level components, you know, um, 
that will re-implement that using this uh, uh, using this hierarchy. So when we're done with 3.7, everything's going to kind of look the same in terms of the layout. And, you know, the difference between what code looks like when you write it out of tree and what code looks like when it's in tree is actually going to be pretty small. They're all going to be organized the same way. Uh, it's just one is included in a master build system, and the other one is designed to link against GNU Radio. Uh, but the actual layout, this is exactly how our how to write a block is organized now. So when you go look at that, um, it has uh, this hierarchy. Um, and hopefully it makes it a little bit more consistent when people browse the source code. Like, like Tim said, you know, the source code is the documentation. So um, we're trying to improve that. Right, Tim? Where'd he go? I'm going to quote you from now on. on that. Any, any questions on this, by the way? I, I mean, is this obvious or is this too complicated? Well, they're, they're, when we say pure Python modules, an excellent question. Um, there's a couple of things that tend to end up in Python. Um, sometimes, because we're working in Python as the outer uh, wrapper for a flow graph, we have utility functions for, like, you know, calculating taps or um, for uh, having constants defined uh, that are written in Python. They never get compiled. Um, they uh, form part of the namespace, so when you say from GNU Radio import foo, you know, foo dot is going to have a bunch of things in it, and a lot of those are actually created inside that Python directory, uh, and they don't exist in C. Um, that's where that code would be isolated. It also happens to be that most of the QA code for a GNU Radio component is written in Python, so the QA code ends up in that directory as well. We could have made another slash test and, and done that, but it starts to get a little unwieldy as well. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. With the code reorganization, taking the opportunity to then change the, um, the API to use um, C++ namespaces, this is an example of old code and new code. Um, and it's the kind of uh, relatively minor and possibly even automated changes that you can, you know, with a, with a nice script, make to your own C++ code. Where before we had this flat namespace, you know, gr underscore costas underscore loop underscore cc. Um, and then we had these separate things called factory functions that would create shared pointers to a, uh, new instances of those. Everything now is inside a class that's defined in a namespace for that uh, component. Uh, the addFF block that is part of GR right now is moving into the blocks component. And so we could use, using namespace GR blocks, we could just refer directly to addFF. And to make an instance of that, you just call the make function that's part of that uh, class. And that'll be consistent across all the blocks. Um, likewise, the costus loop that's part of GR digital um, and again, this is the way it is now, so you can go look at this. Um, it's just calling the make function. That's uh, you know, the static uh, or the you know, the static member function uh, of the class for that. Now, some of you who only use GNU Radio from GRC or from Python are going to look at this and say, "Yep, I made the right choice to only go to Python or GRC." <laughs> uh, uh, but some of you are writing more complicated applications uh, that uh, you can't express some of the logic in GRC. Um, you know, we'll use a Python, or if you uh, if you happen to be really into pain, you know, this is the route that you go. Yes, Tim. Or Mac, uh, Max. So, so Max's question is, do I have to do the same thing to my code? You don't have to. You might want to uh, for the same reasons we're doing this. But uh, 
if you want to create an instance of a GNU radio block, you'll be calling the make function that's part of the class. But your own classes, you can continue to write in the old style um, because you'll know how to instantiate them with, you know, you know, max underscore make underscore add FF, you know, for, for the max library. Um, so you don't have to make those changes. Um, this doesn't impose really anything on your own code or your own blocks. But for consistency, you may want to adopt the same mechanism. If you look in the, in the source code, you'll see, you know, using namespace gr, open uh, parent, or open brace, uh, using namespace blocks. And then there's all the code. Uh, and so everything else becomes part of the GR blocks namespace. That same convention for creating namespace thing you can use in your own code if you want, but but you're not. We're not imposing on the on you that you have to. In the back. Uh, one more slide. I'll tell you what what happens. Uh, so short answer is yes, it does translate. Um, the only thing that's changing in Python is some of the things that use gr dot whatever now are, you know, blocks dot or digital dot or filter dot or whatever. Uh, but everything else is the same. What we do in our Python wrapper uh, in Swig is that when you call the function, when you say gr dot add ff open parent close parent, underneath it was calling this gr make add ff taking the pointer and making it a, a Python object. So you didn't know it was happening. It just it called that. Now in this, we have a different swig helper uh, mechanism that calls the static make function and does the same thing with the return pointer. So the syntax in Python actually doesn't change. So you had you know, foo equals gr dot add ff, and with the renaming of the, of the namespaces, now it'll be you know, foo equals blocks dot add ff. But the um, syntax for creating a new instance of a GNU radio block from Python doesn't change. So the impact of the code really is going to be your imports, uh, whereas a lot of things that were in libgnu radio core just ended up in GR. Now you'll be importing blocks or digital or filter or FEC or wavelet or whatever uh, and just calling, using that namespace dot your block name. <coughs> Um, so it's, a, again, a fairly mechanical change that you may even be able to automate with scripting. Uh, we'll look into that, right? Won't we, Tom? No, you'll look into that. <laughs> yeah, one of Eric Blossom's famous said scripts that changes the whole tree in three lines. You know. So, so again, in Python, the impact is going to be mostly related to the namespace change, not to the API change. Um, the, the way you create blocks will be the same. Does that make sense? The impact on GRC users is almost none. Again, as part of this reorganization, if you're going to touch 300 things, you might as well just get it all done. Is we're looking at how we're categorizing in the right-hand column. Uh, you know, one of the things in the in the move to the new organization is that in the GRC directory, you had all these hundreds of XML files that pertain to how to wrap these Python blocks or C++ blocks inside GRC. Uh, we're moving those XML files into the component that they belong to so that they're associated. You can, in one component, you can look at the C++, you can look at the header file, you can look at the Python wrapper, you can look at the GRC wrapper, and it's all in one place. Uh, while we're doing that, we're going to come up with a different categorization that shows up on the right side of GRC in terms of where the blocks are found. Uh, and we may have to write a script that edits GRC files for you to change, um, to make a 3.6 GRC file convert it to a 3.7 GRC file. We haven't really looked into what the impact might be. Uh, but you won't actually have to change your flow graphs uh, written in GRC to use the new API. So, so the, the biggest impact is to the C++ native users, but that's sort of always been the case. Um, Python users, some impact. GRC users, almost none. Um, does that make sense? Okay. So in all of this right now, we have created on the master branch, GRFFT, GRDigital, filter, 
vocoder and wavelet. And actually, vocoder and wavelet came in 3.5, I believe. Um, so those exist. Um, and their counterparts, for the most part, are still in LibGNU Radio Core. So you don't have to use these. I think digital in the 3.6 release, we, we pulled some out. In progress are GR blocks. Uh, GR analog was just started. GRFEC is sort of being planned right now on how we actually want to do it. Uh, the next step is to start pulling these things out of the next branch so that um, all of the example code and the uh, GRC scripts refer to the new blocks instead of to the old ones in core. Um, unfortunately, you don't get a compile error when your Python script points to the old instead of the new. So we've had some, some churn with fixing little bugs or, oh, we, did, we forgot to change that one because there's really no automated way of doing it. Um, but that's sort of the big next step is once we get blocks in the analog uh, as new top-level components, those have like the bulk of the blocks in core. So almost all of the GRC scripts that refer to, you know, GR dot whatever are going to have to change to blocks dot or, or uh, analog dot, you know, kind of thing. So that's, that's going to be a bit of a pain, and, and we'll probably have some bugs come out of that process. We have, of course, all the remaining, you know, uh, GRUHD and Trellis and, and the, um, uh, what's that? Video SDL, yeah. Uh, uh, Pager and NOAA and all the, the different top level. We're going to have to change those, but we're not going to change them uh, on the master branch because that would break your code. We're going to change them on the next branch in place so one day we'll, it'll look like one thing and then there'll be a commit and it'll look like the new one. Um, so you, you'll, if you're using the next branch now, you'll, you may get caught up in that. Um, but that's what the master branch is for, is that stability. Um, and then finally, the very last step in all of this is once we have all these new things done, we move GR runtime into its own thing and change all of the rest of GNU Radio to use the new runtime instead of core. Um, this actually has been done once before. Uh, Eric Blossom and I created a GR runtime about three years ago. That was just it. Um, but we decided that we couldn't do that without making all these other changes as well. So that kind of fell by the wayside. But we, we know it's involved in this, and, and this won't be a, a huge deal in the back. So the general versus gen generators, all that kind of stuff, you keep that all the same? No. So the question is about general and gen gen. In GNU Radio Core, where we had signal processing blocks that did exactly the same thing, but uh, on different data types, those tended to go into something called GenGen, -gen, where we ran scripts to, we had our own template language and ran scripts to generate all of the specific blocks that use, you know, we'll do this for integers, we'll do this for floats, we'll do this for shorts. Uh, that mechanism is completely going away. Um, the biggest reason for it is those blocks tend to be the kind of things that can be helped with Volk. And all of those function names are unique. So it's very difficult to write a, like a template, if you will, for uh, a block that is instantiated for different data types because they have to call different Volk kernels to accelerate them. So we just decided to bite the bullet and make those individual files. Um, so, so the gen, gen, and the general distinction is, is gone. Probably not for the, the reasons, again, that it's, it's hard to template calls to Volk because, you know, the different data types require very different Volk kernels to accelerate. Um, um, yeah, I, I'd like to, to, to look at that. Um, I'm a fan of templates. I like using, you know, code once and having it, you know, all the changes be automated as much as possible. Um, we looked at templates back in the 2.8 to 3.0 transition, you know, six years ago, five years ago. And at the time, Swig had a hard time with it, and uh, as well as the C++ namespaces. And so it kind of fell by the wayside. Um, I, I'm sort of have mixed feelings about whether that's useful or not uh, in GNU Radio. Uh, that's another way of saying we'd like feedback. Tom doesn't think it's useful. I'm, I'm on the fence. So I can be swayed. He probably can't be. Okay.
Um, so I'll go out on the limb and say, you know, we're expecting to be done with this by the end of the year. But I, in June on the list, I said we're expected to be done by the time of the conference. So my credibility here is kind of low. Uh, take that as it will. I, I'm actually expecting, though, uh, to make a pretty good effort at this. What's that? You made a lot of progress. Yeah. Still quite a bit, yeah. Mostly in blocks and analog. Uh, there's so many blocks that are moving that are referenced by Python examples and GRC scripts that the effort isn't so much in that as it's going to be making sure everything all still works and is coherent. That really tripped us up when we removed the GR filter stuff because um, we found a huge number of cases where we forgot to stop calling GNU Radio Core and use the new filter instead. Uh, so when we removed it on Next, it broke a bunch of stuff. Uh, and that's probably going to be the case with the, with the analog conversion. Okay. Uh, any other questions on this? Really? Because it's the complicated algorithms that Volt can really start helping us with that we haven't really attacked yet. And it probably won't be done for 3.7. Again, we're going to hit the, yeah. the obvious things, but there's going to be some really yeah. helpful I, I admit I'm not the expert on Volt, so um, my, my impression is we, we hit most of the low hanging fruit already. Um, but, uh, oh, probably can't hear me, can you? Oh, so what Tom had said was my, my assertion that we had done the bulk of the Volk work and the rest of it was going to be, you know, sort of opportunistic, was inaccurate, uh, and that he thinks there's going to be quite a bit more acceleration opportunities using uh, Volk for the rest of this while we convert them. And I'll defer to his judgment on that because... Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be done with the 3.7. I don't think we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll advance, but we're not going to be done with putting Volk in. But that's a behind-the-scenes thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't affect your code. It's... You know, when we change a GNU radio block to use Volk, your code just suddenly starts running faster. Either that you're, or you're on some quirky CPU architecture and you get seg faults instead. <laughs> One of the two. You know, it's either faster or it breaks. You, know. you can't have everything. You know. um, yeah, we ran into that a lot with, uh, especially on 32-bit machines for some reason. Uh, I still don't know why that was, but...